Thank you. Uh, I'm Jan Smaragdakis. I'm going to present work that's uh, work of Neville Grech, uh, who is my postdoc. He's right there, but he's battling a cold, so I decided to give him a break, and we decided to do the talk uh, that I can do the talk myself. But please ask Neville as well for questions and talk to him. He's friendly, uh, and just uh, keep your distance if you're afraid of catching a cold. <laughs> so pointer and taint analysis. Uh, if you think about it from a high-level view, taint analysis asks which sources, which value sources can reach which sinks. So value sources, taint sources, can be API calls, something like this. So source.readline. There's a taint, uh, there are tainted values that come from the keyboard, say. So which sources can reach which sinks is the question that we're asking, and we're trying to resolve that statically. We are all in the static analysis domain. Pointer analysis similarly asks which object sources can reach which variables. And the object sources are typically allocation sites, instructions that do a new, that allocate a new object. So at a very high level, it seems pretty obvious that these two perhaps can become one, can become a single analysis. They're all about value flow after all. And indeed, that's what we are going to propose. It's one analysis for all value flow, so single implementation, also single formalism. Uh, it tries to integrate ideas that other people have worked in, uh, have worked on in the past, but not quite in the same way. So you'll see to which extent there's unification and some contrast that we will make later. And the point is that the initial analysis, the entire analysis, will be the same, same implementation. It will just have different initial conditions. So different initial conditions for heap objects and for taint values that will flow through exactly the same implementation and some minor special case handling. And this will yield major practical benefits in both precision and coverage, as I'm going to argue. So to think of it at a high level as an analogy, this is having an electrical grid and using the same wires to also propagate data. We upgrade the wires to also carry data. That's much of what we're doing schematically. Now, let's get to a bit more detail. Points to analysis is a static analysis that tries to compute where abstract objects flow, we have an object creation site, like this instruction here, new A with certain parameters to the constructor. And then we all the reasoning of the points to analysis will do is it will try to track local flows through control flow paths, for instance, local assignment instructions, and then flows in and out of the stack. So we will pass values as arguments, get them as return values, and then flows in and out of the heap. So data will be stored and loaded on the heap, and I'm not showing all the cases, but that's effectively all the cases that a point to analysis need to take care of. Well, guess what? It's exactly the same for any taint reasoning at whatever level of abstraction we want to understand it. So if you think about it abstractly, taint reasoning, all that changes is the source of tainted values. So we have a taint source here, and we need to track how these values flow locally through the stack and through the heap. So is it the same thing? And is this something that's an inherent property of the value? So we don't even need to think about taint. We just anoint values as tainted and we're done. Well, there are some, there are, there are some issues if you want to form a really precise analysis that make it not quite the same thing. Here's one issue. That's kind of intuitive. That's the first that's intuitive to understand. It's not the most major in practice. So one issue is, Taint transcends types. So the same kind of taint, the way we would like to think of it, namely that these, these values are tainted from user input from the keyboard, can move from a string to something that's a byte array. So taint is not inherently a property of the value. The value is entirely different here. We transformed our string to a byte array. And that's not the only thing. Taint can be turned on and off. There is a concept called sanitization. There are APIs that ensure that our values are safe. So we cannot propagate any more than that. So that, that's a notion that has no counterpart in pointer analysis, in points to analysis. And also something that shows that taint is not permanently attached to values. So we can have sanitization APIs that produce new values or affect the old values. So the idea that our approach is built on is that taint is represented as abstract objects, but they are separate abstract objects. The concept of taint is a special abstract object. 
we are not making the objects that represent the values, the actual strings, the actual numbers, the actual objects, we're not making those tainted, but alongside those, we propagate special objects that represent the notion that the value can be tainted. If I have both, then that I have the value and the value is tainted. If I have only the regular abstract object that represents the value, I have the value, but the value is not tainted. In this way, taint can be sanitized away, and the same taint, the same flavor of taint, can be applied to different types. So, in a grander scheme, what we have is a complex, uh, program, a, a pro a complex points to analysis framework for whole program analysis. It has lots of features, uh, support for lots of features that I'm going to mention pretty soon. And what we do with that is we change the inputs. Instead of just taking the program instructions, we now take some taint sources. And the result is a joint points to and taint analysis with a unified implementation. Let's try to dig in deeper and see exactly what happens here. The main concept that a points to analysis computes can be thought of as a relation, as a table, if you wish, that's called var points to. This variable points to this heap allocation, to objects that are allocated in this instruction. All we need to do is generalize this and make it a flows to var relation. Again, this variable points to this value, but values now can be of two things. They can be explicit instructions in the program that create new objects. They can be heap allocations, just like before. Or they can be special values that represent taints. And that's something that does not exist in the program. It's only in our mind, the concept that this is tainted by the network or the keyboard or anything else. So we have two kinds of values now, heap allocations and tainted values. If we do this, I don't expect you to read the rules, but there is a pretty standard model of points to analysis for Java-like languages. It's eight rules or nine rules if you also have static calls. The model remains entirely unchanged. There's one slight filter condition that enters somewhere, but the model is otherwise entirely unchanged. And on the side, we need a very small amount of extra handling to also have to also support all the nice features that we want for a perfectly realistic, actually state of the art as we're going to show, taint analysis. So schematically, we keep exactly the same code. Now let's go and look at what happens really. We saw this instruction before. New uh, new taint source creates values, and we know that this is a taint source. So instead of having abstract objects that only that represent the real values, we can have here, and I'm showing an inference rule in the data log form, uh, which is common for, stand for declarative analysis. I'm going to have a new rule that creates new objects, artificial abstract objects, that will represent the taint values. So what does this really say? If I have a source method, and this is matching this here, and I have established that there's call graph heads, from a certain invocation instruction to the method, and the invocation instruction assigns its re result to a variable two, what I'll do is I will say there is a new taint value that will flow to two. That's pretty straightforward. All we need to remember is that we have these new taint values that are not allocation instructions in the program. But now let's get a little more interesting. Let's see something that is a glitch in the unification. We want to take values and propagate them to different types. So we have an instruction in our running example that's like this. I have a string, I do get bytes, and I get an array of bytes as a result. And I'm not going to show how, but really, let's say we have derived a relation is tainted from that says two is tainted from from with a type byte array. So we have this relation. And then if my analysis has established, has proven, that from can refer to a certain value, which is a taint value, and to can refer to another value, to an original value that would flow there anyway, then what I will prove is that var can refer to a new taint value that combines the original and a new type. Now, what's var and what's original value just something that we do very often is that we try to go as deep as possible in the program. So the original value is actually an allocation instruction 
in the tainting function, in the source of the taint. So whenever we can do that, we actually do that. We say we will go here and start propagating the taint here instead of out here. But that's a technicality. The main idea is based on, recursively based on existing inferences, we can transform the taint because the taint is a separate value. It's not a property of the original values. So this unification approach has several big advantages. It's one analysis for all value flow. It means that we can fully reuse a very large framework. It's a framework with 2,000 inference rules or more. So many tens of thousands declared, uh, lines of declarative code, which is uh, something pretty big and complex. And the exact same rules now also propagate taint. And we inherit all the precision of the underlying framework, including some 20 different flavors of context sensitivity. And we inherit all the language feature coverage of the underlying framework. So we have full Java support for lots of things that are pretty tricky to model, such as the reflection API and several native methods and implicit initialization and Android lifetime and threads and privileged actions, etc. So the question would be, okay, well, this seems pretty clear. Isn't this what all combinations of pointer and taint analysis would do? And it's actually in sharp contrast to past approaches, and I invite you to see the paper, which has an explicit section for more detail. But I'll very quickly refer to one, which is actually an analysis that's also based on data log. Uh, it's a data log-based analysis that combines points to and information flow and taint. It has, it's from ECOOP12, it's a tool called Beacon. It has separate reasoning for points to and is tainted, even though those rules look very similar. They have the, exactly the same recursive structure. And taint analysis is an oblivious client of points to analysis in that case. So it takes exactly the approach I alluded to before. Uh, the taint is an inherent property of the value. So you paint the value where it starts existing, and you say this value that's allocated in this instruction will always be tainted. In this way, you, can, you, you have the advantage that taint analysis is a client of points to. You propagate no other abstract objects. You get exactly the same results as you would running the points to analysis without taint. But we can, you cannot support anything like sanitization. You cannot have taint for primitive values, which is something that we can have in our program. We can have taint sources for integers without modeling the integers very much them, uh, themselves. Uh, we cannot have, you cannot have taint sources with a beacon approach inside native code because you need to annotate the taint, the, the allocation instruction itself and not the call to a taint source API. So, of course, there are several pragmatics. There is a simplified picture. Uh, you have a points to analysis, you get an, a taint analysis framework. There are several pragmatics. In practice, if you want a state of the art framework, there are lots of things that need to be modeled. Uh, things that have to do with Android semantics, for instance, uh, some specific APIs, knowing that passwords are taint sources. Uh, there's modeling, for instance, for things like servlets, for the servlet, uh, the servlet workflow model, string operations, uh, taint transfers through uh, standard native code, such as serialization, deserialization, etc. So, quickly, I'd like to go to the evaluation. Uh, this was evaluated on several different uh, benchmarks, both micro and macro benchmarks, but clearly the micro benchmarks are good because they're labeled, so we can know both precision and recall. So there were standard benchmarks such as Security Bench Micro. Uh, we came up with, an, with our own benchmark suite, Jane for Flow Bench, which is meant to model servlets. We couldn't find something to model servlets. And then Droid Bench, which has multiple Android security benchmark suites. And we tried to use the full power of our framework, uh, the Duke points to analysis framework enhanced to, to handle taint on all of these benchmarks and configure it as best as possible. Okay, so the results are really good. Uh, we get very high recall and precision numbers for quite scalable execution times. Security Bench Micro, we can analyze the whole suite in something like 10 minutes. And these are numbers that match or exceed uh, all the, uh, the published numbers that we could find for the exact same uh, frame, for the exact same benchmark suites with well-known frameworks. 
So this is state of the art based on benchmarks that also other people have evaluated on in the past, or they have designed perhaps to go together with analysis tools. So it's pretty good precision with the given setup. Uh, very good precision and recall. And very quickly, just to give you a flavor, and this is not entirely readable, and it's fine that it's not entirely readable. The point is that as the bars progress in every group of sub-benchmarks, we get more precision, and really the last two bars, the green and the maroon, for every group are the ones that have a pretty precise analysis using uh, high context sensitivity, either a two-object sensitive or a selective two-object sensitive analysis. And you can see that precision is good exactly because we can leverage all the context sensitivity of the underlying framework transparently. So in the total, which is the first group here, our precision moves from 71% to 91% exactly because of better context sensitivity. And that's really broken down in all the rest of the groups. So there are, of course, sources for imprecision. There are reasons why we have false positives. Uh, this is a framework that's flow and path insensitive. It's not something that's tailored specifically to doing precise flow instruction by instruction. For instance, to, uh, it's also not using access paths like the previous talk that we saw. And we have other sources of imprecision such as uh, array insensitivity in the analysis. So all array indices are collapsed. The other point is that this scales to pretty large apps. So we analyzed large Android apps uh, using this, uh, using our unified framework. And you can see, for instance, Facebook Messenger. I don't know how readable it is, but it's over 120,000 uh, methods, analyzed methods. And the second point here is it's worth comparing this column with this column. This shows, this column here, the tainted flows too, shows how many extra abstract objects, the special, the artificial abstract objects that represent taint, we need to propagate alongside our regular ones. And you can see that this is not a huge number. I mean, in some cases, it goes to about 30 some percent. But in most cases, we only impose a small extra burden on our points to analysis in order to propagate partially up until sanitization or whatever to propagate taint concepts. So to conclude, what we argued for is a unified static points to and taint analysis. It's a single implementation for all forms of value flow. Uh, we showed that this is possible, but also highly profitable. And the, the key idea is that taint is just a way to, uh, taint is represented as just special abstract objects. It, it's, they're not attached to the values themselves. They just propagate alongside values as separate abstract objects. Uh, and we can distinguish whether a value is tainted or not. So in practical results, we got pretty high precision and recall. It combines with very good scalability. Thank you very much. <laughs>